Good morning, everybody. I'm Nikki Stanzione. And I'm Kristen Van Dyke. And this is New Mexico Style. I hope everybody had a happy Halloween. We're back in our normal our normal gear mm -hmm. as our normal yes. selves today. But it was fun yesterday. Those little yes. kids were so cute. They were. So many cute kids. Cute pictures, too, of all the Halloween costumes. And the weather was perfect. Oh, wasn't so it? perfect. <laughs> but I was surprised. I had no trick or treaters. What is that all about? I didn't either. And then a friend of mine down the road, no trick or treaters either. I wonder what. I guess maybe they're doing. Earlier in the day, because I maybe I mean maybe I think you scared everybody off with your apple, <laughs> the evil apple. <laughs> it's possible. Well, now that Halloween's over, I can't believe we're already into November. Today is actually November first. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the time went this year, but let's take a look at today's event calendar so you have some ideas of what's going on around the community. First of all, legends, ghost stories, and history come to life as you explore 300 years of Old Town Albuquerque's haunted history. Professional Ghostbusters will escort you on a 90-minute spine-tingling search for lost souls who have made Old Town their eternal home. For ticket information, you can visit toursofoldtown.com or simply call 246-8687. And what you want to do is just come with an open mind, and I would also really highly recommend you bring your digital camera because guests have captured many curious unexplained phenomena in photos that are taken during the tour. We saw that ourselves mm -hmm. yesterday here on New Mexico Style. Yeah, you can have a good time with that or brown bag it at the ABQ Bio Park. Learn about the aquarium's newest exhibit, the Pacific Coral Reef. Mm -hmm. At today's lunchtime talk, the lecture is from 12.45 to 1.30 and is free with admission. The aquarium, of course, is located at 2601 Central Northwest. How nice. It's a, especially nice when things are free. Oh, gotta love that. <laughs> you gotta love that. And you know, take advantage. Like, I know you were saying that it's November. It doesn't really feel like November, no, right? it doesn't. It doesn't feel like November. It doesn't smell like November either. No. <laughs> it's really smoky Warm. out this morning. Oh yeah, the smoke is bothering me a little bit. Yeah, so if you're going to be out and about, no air quality alerts have been issued, but you'll definitely smoke it. So, or smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Morning you'll television, definitely smell Kristen. it. Like, you might, you might be smoking the smoke too. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm just, never mind. I don't even know where I'm going with that. Okay, so, anyway, if you look out, here's a look. You can see it's really hazy out there. And um, it's pretty hazy looking out toward the Santias, too. And uh, so it is a little bit foggy out with that smoke around. Temperatures are chilly, and as long as the temperatures stay chilly through most of the morning, and it will be an issue. We're at 40 degrees right now, but your day planner here showing how we'll go through the day. It should get better for us as we warm up toward the lunch hour, upper 60s then. We'll top out today in the low to mid 70s. <laughs> oh, hopefully we can get the giggles out of ourselves. Yes. Yeah, you know, so, okay, so what was the best costume that you thought you saw t yesterday on the show? Did you did you feel like there was one in particular that oh, stood out to you? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I thought the kids were just the all kids, adorable. Yeah, they were so cute, and I really liked the, um, you know, it was so cute. What? The little boy, uh, the ninja. He was Wesley. a ninja last year, Wesley. Yeah. And then this year, he was, uh, he had the gun. and The combat. He? Combat the, guy. Yeah. He, He's full of tricks. I he loved is full it. of tricks. I mean, he earned the candy big yeah. time. He earned that candy. And I also thought the Dracula was adorable. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing, you know, how cute it is to see all the kids, like, get inspired and get creative and have a good time and do something. You know, it's once a year, so, you know, you might as well do it. I just feel so bad for all the kids on the East Coast. You know, I talked to some friends back East, and, you know, Halloween was, like, null and void. I mean, mm -hmm. it, and Governor Christie had said, you know, maybe we should postpone Halloween because... The kids can't get out and trick or treat. It's not really an option. So no. I feel so bad for everybody that's going through that. And so many people, just from a first hand account, I can tell you, so many people still without power, including my own family. And uh, it's just a really scary time. It's just, a, you know, for us here, the only thing I can say is to stand on a soapbox and just say, let's appreciate everything oh, we have. Yeah. The little things we take for granted, like being able to turn on a light <laughs> or, or, or turn on a stove or just the minimal yeah, things of our lives that we're used to. They're still going through a rough time out there. You know, and yeah. it's funny because 1991, the perfect storm, not funny really, but ironic. Yeah. Same thing with the Halloween and the kids. And, I know. But this time, a lot worse. A lot worse. Well, of course, there's still more updates. Let's check in with KRQ News 13 anchor Elizabeth Alvarez who has the morning's headlines. Did you have, what was your son? What did he do for Halloween? He was Woody. Aww. Woody from Toy Story. Aww. Yes. Aww. Daddy took him trick-or-treating last night. It was a little too late for me. But, uh, <laughs> it was actually his first time. It, it was. was. First time did he, how go. was yeah. it? He was great. You know, he, I think they went out for maybe a half hour, came See? back with enough candy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's basically one candy per day here. For the, <laughs> for the whole month, yeah. So, yeah. All right, good morning, ladies, and good morning to you at home. We begin this morning talking about how there will be extra police officers at Hoover Middle School in Albuquerque today after the district found out about a possible shooting that was being planned out. Now, we should learn more about this today, but right now what we know is that the district found out about this plot yesterday. 
Administrators say one of the six students who were supposedly involved here told the principal about it, even showing her a diagram that the students had made. Now, the district does not think that the threat is credible, but it is still taking the proper precautions. And investigators did not find any weapons at the kids' homes. But as you can imagine, parents are puzzled and worried. You're wondering what is the situation? What, why are they making these threats? Um, are they being bullied themselves in these uh, retaliation tactics? You really don't know. You're just up in the air, and it's scary that it can happen at such young ages. The district says three of the six students involved here go to APS schools and are middle school aged. They are suspended right now from school. Three Albuquerque police officers will be getting paid for today, even though the department is still investigating them for a video that some say shows the officers crossing the line. Now, the city did not want anyone to see this lapel video here from a few months ago. In fact, we had to go to court to get it. Investigators say it shows officers Connor Rice, Ron Ronald Surin and Shad Solis tasing, beating, and stepping on people they were supposed to be arresting. Now, we did some checking and found out that Rice is still on paid suspension, even though his name is off the city's payroll. He's also facing criminal charges for aggravated battery. Saran is on active military duty but can't be interviewed right now, and Solis is on desk duty, even though he's been in a lot of trouble before. The police department does not know when the internal affairs investigation will be complete. The state is cracking down on employees who use their work gas cards to fill up their personal vehicles. Officials say it's a big problem and it's costing you a lot of money. The state's Transportation Services Division says that the state needs to make sure that there's only one gas card given per vehicle and that it needs to have a spending cap on the cards. He says if workers get caught stealing, they could lose their job and even face criminal charges. Currently, there's about 4,600 state passenger vehicles in use. An update now on Superstorm Sandy. Now that she has uh, kind of moved on out and she has definitely left a lot of destruction behind. She has killed at least 74 people here in the U.S. Plus, 6 million people still don't have power, most of them in New York and New Jersey. People there are starting and trying to get back to work, but some subways and streets are still closed. President Barack Obama, seen here, met with New Jersey's Governor Chris Christie to tour the devastation in the Garden State yesterday. National Guard troops are now helping out. They're helping more than 20,000 people who are stranded in their homes. Now, overall, Sandy's done tens of billions of dollars in damage throughout the East Coast. And some Red Cross volunteers from right here in New Mexico are on their way to the East Coast to help out some of the victims of, her, of Superstorm Sandy. Seven volunteers took off yesterday. They're actually going to be helping out the victims by providing food, shelter, medical, and mental health services for the next several weeks. And yesterday, yes, was Halloween. And one creative Halloween costume that really caught our attention, check this out, the State Department of Transportation worker here dressed up as our very own investigative reporter, Larry Barker. Look at the comparison. This is uh, the DOT employee side by side with our real Larry Barker. Pretty good job, right? He got it down, he got it right down to the mustache. I told you. Did I not say this was that was going to be a good costume? I had my Larry Barker mask with me yesterday. That wraps it up for your morning headlines. Be sure to catch Matt, Kristen, and myself every weekday morning on KRQE News 13, beginning at 4.30 a.m. Ladies, oh, hope you had a good one. Thank you. We love Larry Barker, but I will say next year, I think I'm going to look for an Elizabeth Alvarez mask. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I you hope it's a good them? one. I hope it of looks course. good. <laughs> Hey, I wouldn't mind looking like you for a day. Aww. It'd be terrible. Well, I was thinking about that. Wouldn't that be intimidating to have your face on like thousands yes. of masks? What if it was a bad picture? Right? I know. Or what about <laughs> having your face on a balloon that flies across the New well, Mexico skies? Larry Barker, he isn't scared of anything. That's a good let point. Let alone a bad picture. Well Ooh, said. <laughs> well said. Well, now here's something interesting. You know, a full bag of candy signals a successful Halloween. In mm -hmm. some households, though, candy is gobbled up in a matter of days. Well, in others, it may linger through the entire holiday season. It happens. But as Karen Kaiva reports, leftover candy can turn into a lesson in giving. Americans were expected to spend a whopping $8 billion on Halloween this year, according to retailers. That includes $2.3 billion worth of candy. But all that sweet stuff can scare parents, so consider some tricks for dealing with too many treats. 
Halloween can be a spooky time for pediatric dentists who fret over sugar and their patients' teeth. So over the last few years, many have initiated candy buybacks, where youngsters bring in their sweet treats to exchange for cash, coupons, even new toothbrushes. Visit the website HalloweenCandyBuyback.com to find a dentist near you. The dentists send the candy off to Operation Gratitude, one of a few groups that puts the treats in care packages for U.S. troops serving overseas. Other organizations mounting similar efforts include Operation Shoebox and the Operation Stars and Stripes trick-or-treating for the Troops Project. And this year, kids who've seen images of the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy may want to do something to help. Consider donating some treats to kids on the East Coast whose Halloween celebrations may have been disrupted. For Consumer Watch, I'm Karen Kaper. We love to hear about people giving back and mm -hmm. doing good things. And, you know, right now there's so much talk about people being able to find ways to help with the relief fund and help with the children out in the East. And, I mean, I love to hear that people are thinking about that and thinking yeah. forward because, you know, it could happen to you is the bottom line. It could oh, happen yeah. anywhere. It could have happened to us right here in New Mexico, and it didn't. So if there's anything that you can I do. Mean, it was against the odds for that to happen in New Jersey. I mean, do you know, realize how slim the odds are for yes. every single thing to line up like it did? Absolutely. It's crazy from a meteorology standpoint. I don't know, like, if mm -hmm. you just know how it the is. weather works, it is crazy how it ended up being a worst case scenario. Yeah, oh, I know. And, you know, I mean, you know, when I studied weather, I mean, there were so many intricacies, mm -hmm. and you've been doing this for so long. You know, I mean, I was in awe of just, like you said, the way it kind of came together as a perfect storm. And, it, you know, it's interesting because meteorologists really get excited about these mm -hmm. kind of things, but we certainly never want to see the kind oh, of destruction no. that we saw. And it was just devastating. So I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see that people are trying to do good things. Yes. And speaking of good things, people try to make the best out of things that could be perceived as a little bit sad, but maybe not <laughs> right. so much, because Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead, celebrates friends and family who have died. Well, the Santa Fe Animal Shelter has now created a tribute along the same lines to honor departed pets called Dia de los Amigos. Right. People are encouraged to leave photos, candles, flowers, and other mementos at the shelter located at 100 Caja del Rio Road. The celebration will conclude Friday with a special event and time for reflection. Isn't that nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, pets are such a big part of our lives here oh, in New yeah, Mexico. Family too. Oh yes, I love to see that. Now every Christmas, the Marines Toys for Tots Foundation brings toys and smiles to millions of needy kids across the whole country. And the local Toys for Tots campaign kicks off on Sunday. We talked about that yesterday. But one of the national sponsors, Toys R Us, is getting ahead of the game, launching its toy drive today. Mm -hmm. Sunday's Toys for Tots kicks off starts with the annual motorcycle ride. Mm. For more information on that <laughs> event and details about donating toys or to register your children, just visit the Toys for Tots website you see here on your screen. It really is one of the most special things that is done mm -hmm. all year long in, in pretty much every community across the country, especially here in New Mexico. But this is really disturbing because the police are still looking right now for the Grinch who stole Christmas. Literally, last week a crook seen here in surveillance photos stole the toy collection box and about $80 from the UPS store on Rio Rancho Boulevard. Who but this? Really, I know. But here's the good news. The manager told us that since the story aired, donations at the store were way up. So people are once again giving. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, there has to be a silver lining, right? Right. And, and I think I heard you guys talking on the news this morning. It was like three times the original amount that was in the box because right. of what they heard. Yeah. That's so nice. I love that. So keep doing good things. Keep doing good things. <laughs> now, Halloween is obviously over, so we're moving full speed ahead to Christmas. Right. Starting today, you can buy permits to cut down a fresh tree in the Lincoln National Forest. The permits cost five bucks each and are good through December 21st. Yeah, and by the way, retailers should be happy because the National Retail Federation expects consumers to spend $600 billion over the holidays. Oh, wow. So people are emptying out the wallets. Yeah. <laughs> Here, huh? I don't know where that money's coming from, but good luck to everybody who's doing it. Are you going to buy a Christmas tree? this year? Yes, I am. You are? I can't wait. Yeah, I moved into a new area or a new home, so mm -hmm. I'm excited to decorate it for Christmas. That's going to be fun. You know, mm -hmm. I always go away to see my family over Christmas, so I've never had my own Christmas tree, you know? You so should that's do be it. Fun. Yeah. Or maybe I'll just help you decorate. You can decorate <laughs> I need all the help I can get. I'm not a very good I think decorator. It's, well, I think it's scary because if you leave town and you leave a fresh tree in your house, it's always something to worry about. You have to worry about those fire hazards, I mm -hmm. guess. So there's a lot to think about, but I can't believe we're already talking about it. We're already here, so... It's pretty exciting. We're getting the holiday season and a lot of great things going on around town with people. We want to congratulate Santa Fe native 
Ivan Duran, who has earned the rank of Eagle Scout. Aww. Ivan graduated from Santa Fe High School in 2009 and is currently a third year student at New Mexico State University studying aerospace engineering. Wow. Mm. He hopes to pursue a master's and a PhD in aeronautics and space administration and actively work to bring space programs to New Mexico. Good for you. Mm. I hope it happens. You know, we need some more exploration. Yeah, good for him. We love to highlight kids, especially who are doing great things across the community and should be honored and if you don't know Eagle Scout is actually the highest rank attainable in the Boy Scouting program and requirements include earning at least 21 merit badges and demonstrating Scout spirit through the Boy Scout oath and law service and leadership so mm -hmm. good for him congratulations Ivan we're happy to hear that And if you have any great stories about any wonderful kids who have done extraordinary things across the community or accomplished anything special let us know we'd love to highlight them and and, and talk about them yeah give them some extra recognition for, for all the good things they've done. Absolutely. Yeah.